Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe to make sure your childhood friendships don't fall apart. Maybe. Today we're building a Dora or She-Ra, depending on how much Horde butt you feel like kicking. Hopefully the answer is a lot, because this is a pretty straightforward build, meaning that we'll be getting the pure power of one of the strongest classes in Dungeons & Dragons. Spoilers, it isn't Wizard. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be able to buff ourselves to become more buff. She-Ra is basically your Super Saiyan form, but with less yelling. Next, we'll get some good girl powers to make sure our team is happy and healthy. Well, at least that they're healthy. Finally, being a teenager is a lot more fun when you have independent transportation, so we'll get something to let us ride swift winds. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, you'll probably do better than the point array. I believe in you. Strength will be number one. Your first job was working for the Horde, and they're all about brawling and shot calling. Charisma next, you need to call shots and inspire your ragtag group of rebels to fight alongside you, even if you're stopping the enemies hard enough solo. Constitution after that, taking hits won't break your stride. Follow that up with dexterity, your armor is sleeveless, so I'm calling it something in the medium category. Sun's out, guns out. Wisdom is a little low, your best animal friend is actually a fully sentient individual, so animal handling isn't really your bag. Also, cats hate you even if they are also kind of in love with you. Intelligence will be our dump stat. You didn't get a solid education in the Horde. It was so bad you didn't know what an aunt was. I know the Horde is evil, but jeepers, invest in education, you monsters. Picking a race for the first ones is actually pretty easy. You've got holy powers and an epic transformation. Since that transformation doesn't involve flight, Scourge Asimar is my pick. This gives you plus two charisma and plus one constitution, 60 feet of dark vision, the light cantrip from the light bearer ability, in case your squad doesn't have your super eye, Celestial Resistance will give you resistance to radiant and necrotic damage. Bad guys really like necrotic damage. Something about sapping the life out of other people really appeals to them. Weird. Healing Hands is our last first one's power for now, letting you touch a creature to restore HP equal to your level as an action. You can also use it on yourself if you're on your solo mission. Don't be stingy with it. This build has plenty of other healing options. For your background, modify the soldier background to grab acrobatics and intimidation instead of athletics. Not because you can't lift, we can just grab athletics later and we can can't grab acrobatics later. That's because we're being a paladin. Yeah, that was probably pretty obvious, but it's also pretty darn good. First level paladins can learn two skills from the paladin list. Athletics and persuasion are like the standard soldier skills, but for nice people. Lay on hands is the big first level ability for paladins, letting you heal an ally as an action from a pool of HP equal to five times your paladin level. You can spend five of these to remove a disease or effect of poisoning. You also get divine sense, letting you detect celestials, fiends, or undead within 60 feet of you, or whether or not the area you're in is consequential consecrated or desecrated. If it's consecrated, there could be some answers to all your she rock questions that might be worth looking into. You can use this an amount of times per day equal to one plus your charisma modifier, so don't forget to use it. Sneaky demons can be a real pain. Second level paladins get a fighting style, and even though your sword is called the Sword of Protection, we're going to be going with Great Weapon Fighting. That lets you reroll ones and twos on damage die for attacks you make with weapons you're holding two-handed. Even though your sword is great, I wouldn't call it a great sword, it's just not long enough. That's how you know it's a long sword, which heals 1d8 one-handed or 1d10 two-handed. You can also cast paladin spells now, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your charisma modifier to a creature you touch as an action, for another healing option. Heroism makes a creature you touch immune to the frightened condition, and they get temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier at the start of each of their turns for a minute depending on your concentration. This is a great self buff, but it can also be used to rally your buddies. Shield of Faith adds two to the AC of a creature of your choice for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Lots of paladin spells are concentration, so you've gotta pick your favorites, it's kind of a bummer. Divine Favor is another one of those. It adds a D4 of radiant damage to your weapon attacks for a minute, make your sword glow with first one's energy, and get a little extra oomph. If you'd rather get all of that oomph really quickly, you could also make a Divine Smite, which spends a spell slot to add 2d8 radiant damage to a weapon attack, and it deals an extra d8 of radiant damage towards fiends or undead. Not super common for you, but if your male equivalent's nemesis comes to town, you're really gonna rattle their bones. Third level paladins get divine health, making you immune to disease, no days off. You can also pick a sacred oath. The oath of heroism comes from an unearthed arcana, so make sure you get your DM's permission. If your DM isn't into that, devotion. 
redemption, even vengeance can be useful for heroes like you. You get a couple spells from the heroism list. Expeditious Retreat lets you dash as a bonus action for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Guiding Bolt lets you make a ranged spell attack, dealing 4d6 radiant damage on a hit, and giving the next creature to attack it advantage on their roll. This is a nice little sword beam that you get in the later seasons when you really want to go full health master sword on some baddies. You can also use Channel Divinity once per short rest. Your options are Peerless Athlete to give yourself advantage on athletics and acrobatics checks for 10 minutes, or Legendary Strike to crit on a 19 or a 20 for a minute. Unfortunately, you're both an athlete without peers and a striker of legendary renown, but you can only do one of these things. Pro tip, Paladin crits are nasty, considering you can add Divine Strikes after you know it's a crit to deal 4d8 radiant damage with one spell slot. I highly recommend the crit boost. Speaking of extra radiant damage though, as a Scourge Asimar, you also get Radiant Consumption at this level, letting you burn a little extra She-Ra energy to deal half your level in radiant damage to creatures within 10 feet of you, including you, unfortunately. But you resist that damage, so it's no big deal. You can also add your level in radiant damage to creatures you hit with a melee attack or spell attack once per round. It's all lasts for a minute, so you can't be permanently she rot Use it wisely. Fourth level paladins get an ability score improvement or a feat. The tavern brawler feat works even if you're not old enough to get into a tavern. You get plus one to strength or constitution. I want to round up strength. Your unarmed attacks and improvised weapon attacks also now deal 1d4 plus your strength modifier and damage, and you can grapple creatures as a bonus action after you make one of those attacks. The new class features variant Unearthed Arcana introduced unarmed fighting as a fighting style, but you only get one as a paladin unfortunately, so we need to use that for the sword. Also, your proficiency with improvised weapon will let you yeet boulders. And don't you kind of want to yeet a boulder? Fifth level paladins get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one as your action, so you can hack and slash. Very nice. You also get second level spells from the heroine list. Enhance ability gives a creature you touch advantage on a type of ability checks of your choice for an hour, depending on your concentration. If you choose strength, their carrying capacity also doubles. If you choose dexterity, they take no damage from falls of 20 feet or less. And if you choose constitution, they have an extra 2d6 temporary hit points. Pick and choose as you need to, but honestly, you've got stronger concentration spells like magic weapon, which makes your weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances and adds one to attack and damage rolls for up to an hour depending on your concentration. The Sword of Protection is, spoilers, a magical weapon. And maybe your DM will just give you one, but I don't know that. Sixth level paladins get Aura of Protection, letting allies within 10 feet of you add your charisma modifier to their saving throws. You are an ally of yourself within 10 feet of yourself, so that means you too, meaning your lowest saving throw is your intelligence with a plus two at the moment. That's nice, saving throws can be scary. Seventh level paladins get Mighty Deed, meaning that whenever you land a critical hit, you can impress your friends and terrify your enemies. Pick a number of creatures within 30 feet of you equal to your charisma modifier. If you like them, give them temporary HP equal to 1d6 plus your charisma modifier. If you used to like them, but now they're your mortal enemy, force them to make a wisdom saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier, frightening them until the end of your next turn. You can only use this once per turn. So if you crit twice, you're gonna have to deal with the fact that you're only dealing massive damage with the second one. Tragic. 8th level paladins get another ability score improvement. Bump your strength again, don't get me wrong, your charisma is important, but hitting and throwing stuff is kind of your main thing. Even more so when you hit the 9th level of paladin, giving you 3rd level spells. As a hero paladin, you get haste, letting you give a creature you touch plus 2 to their AC, double movement speed, advantage on dexterity saves, and an extra action to make 1 attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object. That's three attacks per round and 60 feet of base speed to close the gaps. It lasts for up to a minute depending on your concentration. After it ends, you can't take actions or reactions for a round, so make sure it doesn't end until the enemies are defeated. Probably pair it with your radiant consumption, just to be sure. Protection from energy gives a creature you touch resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for an hour, depending on your concentration. If you think there's gonna be a dragon fight, this is nice, but I'm gonna recommend haste. It's kind of my favorite spell. 10th level paladins get Aura of Courage, making allies within 10 feet of you immune to effects of frightening. You must be strong. You must be brave. You must be bray a ave. 11th level paladins get improved divine smite, adding a permanent d8 of radiant damage to all of your weapon attacks, not counting the extra damage from more smites. Be brave, do smites. 12th level paladins get another ability score improvement. Cap off your strength to attack with all of the power of Grayskull, whatever that is. 
13th level paladins can learn 4th level spells. Find Greater Steed from Xanathar's Guide to Everything lets you spend 10 minutes to summon a mount. There are a lot of great options, but Swift Wind is a Pegasus, so let's talk about those. They can hoof things, dealing 2d6 plus 4 bludgeoning damage, but more importantly, they have a 90 foot flying speed. Fun thing about Find Greater Steed, while you're mounted on the creature, you can make a spell that only targets you also target the mount. And since Find Greater Steed is in concentration, how about Tulok's favorite spell, Haste? This means that your Pegasus could hypothetically fly 540 feet in one round. Now that's what I call Swift Wind. Also fun fact, Pegasus have an intelligence score of 10, meaning that you are not the brains of this operation, but your brains are connected so you can telepathically communicate with them if you're within one mile, which is nice. 14th level paladins get cleansing touch, letting you remove the effects of a spell on yourself or another willing creature an amount of times equal to your charisma modifier per long rest. That sword can shoot healing beams, just make sure that you've got the settings right. You don't want to accidentally microwave one of your fellow princesses. 15th level hero paladins get glorious defense, letting you add your charisma modifier to your AC against one attack as a reaction. If this makes the attack miss, you can respond with an attack against them. There's no limit to how often you can do this, which is pretty Pretty amazing as it'll likely give you an opportunity attack every round. 16th level paladins get an ability score improvement. You know how you've got all those abilities tied to your charisma? Why don't you invest in your charisma? Wouldn't that be nice? 17th level paladins get 5th level spells. Holy Weapon from Xanathar's Guide to Everything gives you an extra 2d8 radiant damage to your weapon attacks. It makes the weapon magical for overcoming resistances. It shines a light in a 30 foot radius. You can dismiss that good light as a bonus action, forcing enemies in a 30 foot radius to make a constitution save or take 4d8 radiant damage and blind them for a minute, half damage and no blinding if they succeed. Sword of Protection. More like sort of dealing a lot of rate dealing a lot of radiant damage. Nailed it. 18th level paladins extend their auras of protection and courage to 30 feet, letting your inspiration spread to all of the princesses, at least the ones you're close with. So probably not Spinnerella. Y'all never invite her. What's the deal with that? 19th level paladins get our last ability score improvement. Cap your charisma for maximum casting and an extra 5 AC once per round. If that makes people miss, you can bonk them with your magical girl sword. Our capstone is the first level of rogue, wait no, that's wrong, level 20 of paladin. Hero paladins get living myth, letting you channel the power of she legend. For 10 minutes, you get advantage on all charisma checks. You can turn one missed weapon attack per round into a hit, and you can turn a failed saving throw into a success as a reaction. You can do this once per long rest, but between this and your channel divinity and your radiant consumption, you've got plenty of transformations to make you a legendary hero. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, damage is high, thanks to holy weapons, divine smites, hasting, and radiant consumptioning. And radiant damage is a very good type of damage, mostly resisted by celestials, which are mostly good and probably won't be fighting you. You're also great at getting around, thanks to Swiftwind's insane flying speed. Finally, charisma is a fun thing to be good at, letting you talk your way out of fights, and you can add yours to all your saving throws, which is really good. For weaknesses, your AC is pretty low, hanging out somewhere around 16, meaning incoming damage could be pretty high. You also took Tavern Brawler, which is just not a very good feat, really only becoming valuable if someone takes your sword away. Investing in your constitution could have given you an extra 20 health, or 40 with the tough feet, or higher AC with a little dexterity investment. Finally, outside of the physical and bartery skills, you're kind of lacking, so intelligence and wisdom checks could leave you looking a little bit dumb. Fun fact though, this is the first time I've ever listed a lack of skill proficiencies as a negative, because generally I just assume your party will round those out, so that means I was really stretching for weaknesses. Pure Paladin is really strong, and so are you. Dish out that radiant damage like you're some sort of sun goddess. Just make sure someone in your party is brainy. When your horse is smarter than you, that's not a good thing. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Click the annotation in the top right corner of the video to vote in the poll. You can vote for Samurai Jack, Ben 10, or Steven Universe. And come back Thursday for a very bendy boy.